launch SketchUp. While holding Command, press Spacebar. And what this video is going to walk you through is launching SketchUp. We're going to draw your name in SketchUp and play around a little bit. And then you're going to do a little bit of loose 3D drawing from the start. So let's just instead focus for now on launching SketchUp. So while holding Command, press Spacebar, start typing SKE. It'll automatically suggest SketchUp. And the reason for that is because the Mac indexes and kind of sorts everything like a library would based on alphabetical order, based on frequency of use, based on all kinds of stuff. So here's SketchUp. I just hit return, the icon's bouncing, that's telling me that it's thinking. And be sure as uh, you go through this, you're pausing the video as you need. Now, from the get-go, you might end up being under this license. You don't want to check this out for offline use. We want to make sure that anybody can always get to this. So if I checked it out for uh, offline use, that would mean that uh, these 14 seats would start decreasing and that fewer and fewer people could use it. Uh, my simple template is feet and inches. Since we probably think of things in feet and inches, you might want to just go with that and not mess around. Um, but you can probably just click start using SketchUp. But you can figure those things out on your own. It's not going to be the end of the world if you make an imperfect choice there. So many times I find that students kind of jump and they say, oh, what should I click here? Well, just ignore this. You know, figure some stuff out on your own. And most of the time, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now, I'm really not crazy about how people throw windows out of the way like this. I think it's better if you end up resizing them by doing a click and drag in this gray area, tucking them to the top left corner or to the bottom right corner as you see fit. And the whole deal there is you can always hit Command M to minimize things when you need to get back to your desktop. So that's launching SketchUp. Now we should have a folder structure and um, SketchUp as we're using it here does not save to the cloud. So let's go to File, Save As, Find your way to your name and choose 3D projects. If you're not seeing all these options, then this downward cursor looking thing will bring up more and more features. So the favorite should display documents, your name should be under there, and then a 3D projects folder here. And this tells me that I'm actually saving it under here. Now you'll have other students here as well, so do not assume that because you're seeing 3D projects that you're in your folder. You might want to have to click back to make sure you are specifically under yours and then go back to 3D projects. This will give you different file formats. We're good with just the standard SketchUp. Now before you click Save, go to Untitled and give this the title My Name with a space in capital letters. And then after the E and name, I want a space, a hyphen, and another space. The hyphen is in the top right side by the delete key, so it's just right to the right of the zero. And then I want you to type capital R-E-V for revision, capital A. And the reason this is important is because there will be changes that you make to these files that you want to be able to get again. So let's say that in your B revision, you ended up changing something from two dimensions to three dimensions. You would want to be able to go back to Rev A and um, recover those so that they didn't get lost. Now, just for practice, let's do a click on this lady and hit delete. And instead of going to File, Save, we've already named this, so just hit Command S. And now I want you to hit Command and then W to close that window. Because what I want you to see is that there will be times where you say, hey, you know, SketchUp open, but I can't see my file. Well, right now we don't have a file open, but I am still running the program SketchUp. I can tell that because there's a black dot below the SketchUp icon. And so even as I click it, I'm like, oh, it's not working. While holding Command, press N if you want to start a new file. Or go to File, Open Recent, and you should be able to find my name, Reve. Get this facing the direction you'd like, get it sorted. I'm going to encourage you always try to draw in this green and red area. So right now, I want you to take your time, but not ridiculously, 
and try to build your name, but in block letters. There's a little bit of a delay in mine. Um, SketchUp is just acting weird. You should not be seeing that go on. So go ahead and just do your first name using this pencil tool, clicking as you go. I don't want this to be just um, letters like this, where it's like I made my J and it just looks like that. I want them to be block letters as you do this. So now go and uh, finish your name, pausing the video, and then once you finish it, resume the video I'm creating um, that you're watching. All right, now assuming you pause the video, I want you to now click on this orbit button. And I want you to take a look at your name. What you'll probably realize is that you are not drawing 3D shapes like you thought you would. And that's because SketchUp is going to assume you know what you're doing. And what I'm going to tell you right now is that this is a plane, this red and green line makeup. This is another plane that is made up by your blue and green lines. And then you'd have another plane that would be made up back here that would be made up of the blue and red lines. So SketchUp has no idea the direction in which you're drawing. So they, they assume you know what's going on, but they really don't know and uh, they have to make their best guess. So if you're just loosely drawing, that's not going to be perfect. So if you want things to turn solid and have gray colors as opposed to non-filled in, you're going to have to make sure that you're using these blue and red and green guiding lines to go from there. So let's jump back to what the purpose of this video is. So you've launched SketchUp, you saved this as you've gone, and um, now let's see you draw your name a little bit better this time, and I'll show you how I might draw something that isn't so simple as like you know, the letter T, like a T might be kind of a little bit more obvious or easier to do than other lines. So there's my T and then I can push that up. So my name's a J, so that's going to be a little bit tougher, right? And drawing in 3D is challenging because you don't know um, what it's going to look like sometimes until you're done with it. So this is supposed to be a frustrating trial and error process. So again, the words I used there were trial and error, meaning you try something, maybe you mess it up, which is totally normal, and you repeat the process until you get more and more comfortable with it. So let's check me out. Let's, uh, let's, let's click on this rectangle choice. If you don't see the rectangle choice, you're going to click this downward triangle, and you'll see that it'll bring up other options. You don't want rotated rectangle. You don't want circle. You don't want polygon. You want rectangle. So I'm going to do a click and drag, and I'm going to build my rectangle. Or I could do a single click at the origin, and then move my mouse up in this direction and let go. The nice thing about doing it that way is that um, you're not having to be always holding on to that, and then if you accidentally let go in one direction, you'll end up with a misshapen block. And I'm like, okay, well, cool, I'm going to try to chip away at my J here. Maybe I click in, um, but I'm getting these warnings that I'm on the face of this rectangle. Well, that's what I want. Uh, red's good too because that tells me that this line that I'm drawing, even though it might not look like it, would be parallel to this red line. I can either press the erase button or hit E to bring up the erase key uh, tool and go from there. Now I'm picturing my J and I'm like, well, you know, this is straight and it's kind of like a T, right? So I could draw this in two green lines. And then I could erase this whole chunk over here to get rid of that. Erase this chunk here to get rid of that. Erase that chunk. So I went past what I wanted to um, do what I needed. And then here I'm going to do a click and maybe I go beyond the line and I erase it. And this kind of looks like a J. Now I don't want to start pushing up my J because I have items in random places. So this push-pull button lets you raise or lower different chunks. Command Z is your friend. I can back up to where I didn't erase this. Um, so I'm going to go through and erase that. Go ahead and in two dimensions finish this with the rest of your name as best you can. 
Now I'm going to go to File, Save. I want to save it as revision A once before I push this into three dimensions. So I will now go back to File, Save As again, find my name, find the 3D project folder, and instead of my name Rev A, I'm going to change it to my name Rev B. And the reason I'm doing this is that I go from two dimensions to three dimensions. Things could get screwy. They could get messed up. So now I'm going to push this up, and I'm just going to save it again. And if you want it to be even more clear, you could be like, my name Rev B 3D version. And I think I just ended up saving that in the wrong spot, so maybe this will be a good thing for me to show you. Um, so under my Finder window, I look in my Documents folder, John Rubin, 3D Projects, and I don't see the one I just made. So I can relocate a file and drag it into my spot as I need. Now they add these tildes sometimes, but you'll see the timestamp of when these were saved. And so that is you drawing your name and playing around in SketchUp almost. So let's go to a file and back to SketchUp again. Go to File, New File. And I want you to go to File, Save As, Your Name, 3D Projects, and call this one Playing Around, and then in parentheses, Test. I'm not really worried about revisions here or anything like that, and the reason I'm not, this is just a playing around file. So here's playing around, this will be your second of two files that you've made so far today. Let's get rid of her by clicking on her, her or you can press Command A and hit Delete. Your lady looks different from mine, probably if you have a different version of SketchUp, but for the most part all these tools will be the same. So in this video I want you to continue now and just start poking around with all different shapes. Just mess around. So take 5-10 minutes See what happens if you push chunks up. See what happens if you add shapes, click them in, pull them back, do all kinds of stuff like that. See if you can get like hollowed out parts. So feel free to play around with that, maybe like about 10 minutes, however long um, seems reasonable. Well, all this way I'm Command W to quit those. Usually they ask you if you want to save. Um, so again, this is a trial and error process. Let's move on to the third part of this. Hopefully you've launched SketchUp and uh, made a name file, and then also another one called Playing Around. So now let's get into the 3D drawing basic stuff. Now, again, I'm in SketchUp, but I don't see any files, so I hit Command N for New, and if I didn't want to do a hotkey, I can go to File, New, and I'm going to reorient my window the way I'd like to see it. Command A to delete her, and I'm staying organized, so I'm going to File, Save As. Now I'm doing this quickly, but um, this is the most this is probably like the third or fourth time you've seen this, so File, Save As. Make sure you're under your folder, 3D Projects. And don't click these, because now if you click on those, you're going to rename it. You want to save it as a new file. And so since we're doing this um, 3D drawing, let's call this 3D Basics. I want you to draw things two different ways. I want you to make a rectangle. And we're going to approach this the incorrect way. So let's say you're making something that looked like a flower plant holder. I'm going to orbit this so that I can see it more from a bird's eye angle. If I have a trackpad, I can do a two finger scroll as I zoom, even though I'm in the orbit feature. If I don't have a trackpad, then these magnifying glasses and the hand that pans and the zoom extents button will be my friend. Zoom Extents button should always be your friend because let's say you get way far away from your drawing. If I click the Zoom Extents button, it'll bring me back to the extents of everything I drawn. So that let's say you ended up with a little line over here that you didn't even know was in your drawing. I think this is my whole drawing, but if I click Zoom Extents, SketchUp knows that I had something over there. And then maybe I can delete that and then Zoom Extents again to see a better viewpoint. So back to this rectangle, like let's say you're making like a flower bed or something. So somewhere on the inside, I will make another rectangle. I could also make that more precise by choosing the offset button and just offsetting some difference. And I know that I want my pit of my flower bed to have some elevation, but I want the top part 
of the flower pit, flower bed or whatever to be higher up and have a border. So I push this one up a little. If I make a mistake, I just hit Command Z. And then I push this up. Well, I want to go higher, but it's not letting me. So I keep on going a second time, and I should be good there. Um, now let's orbit this and orbit it to look from below. Because of the way in which I drew this, my bottom is hollow. And what I'm pointing out there is that the order in which I did this was I had everything drawn in two dimensions before I started pushing it up into three. So that is kind of the wrong way of doing this. And let's just do a um, little text tool label here. And let's label this as not 54.469 square feet, but let's label this as the wrong way. And then hit return, drawing 2D first. And really, I guess I could be more clear by saying pushing it up in 2D first. first. Now, let's try to do this in mostly the same area. So I can use that endpoint there, click and draw a new rectangle. But this time, before I draw the inside circle, I'm going to raise this up. Now, here's what's cool about SketchUp. You can actually do the push-pull button and snap it to the same height of an another object by choosing the edge or the surface of that other object so that that will make it the exact same height. There's so many different ways you can approach 3D drawing. So just because I'm doing it one way doesn't mean you won't find better ways of your own. So I'm going to offset this now, and I'm going to bring the inner part all the way down. Well, I don't want this to not have a base. I want it to have some base, so that would be a mistake. But I do want you to see that if I wanted to have a totally hollow object, I could snap it to the end point or to the bottom of this, and then I can see it from above that it's clear. I hit undo because that's really not what I want to do. Command Z is undo again. So if I click the SketchUp uh, push-pull button, maybe I can move this not all the way to the bottom, but somewhere a little bit above and stop where I want. Now, here I'm not being precise and perfect, and that's really not necessary because we're not going to be printing this. But for what you print later, you're going to want to be more precise and way more perfect. But if I look at this, you can see that it's not hollow on the bottom. And yeah, maybe you could just close it in later on, like in the shape on the left, but you don't know that that's always going to turn out perfect. So hopefully it's clear that there is the better way to drawing, and that is by raising and then drawing your next layers. Now you can imagine that this is fine for something as simple as we're doing here, but uh, think about if I were to look at a way more complicated um, project where somebody's doing multiple parts. Or let's see if we got something even more challenging. No, these are pretty straightforward. But, you know, here's glasses, and you might have multiple parts going on there. So this will um, be a good stopping point. Hit Command-S if you save this, and you can try to now draw better and uh, more interesting. 3D shapes if you wanted, like a half pipe. So here's me pulling this up, bringing a circle to a side, erasing the top portion of it, and then pushing the half pipe all the way back um, to give it a cutout.